What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're we'll gonna be checking out Exogate Initiative. We covered a demo of this title from itch.io. Little itsy bitsy teeny tiny demo from itch.io about a year ago. Over a year ago, in fact. And I thought it was kind of interesting. This is a... The best thing that I can compare it to is if you've ever played Evil Genius or Dungeon Keeper, it's got the control scheme and the base building of something like Evil Genius or Dungeon Keeper, but the entire premise of the game is that you are a scientific foundation that's acting on behalf of some kind of UN or like Earth Expeditionary Force, basically a unified world government of some sort. You're working on their behalf to build, erect, and go through a Stargate to figure out what exists out there in the galaxy and do research. And by going through the Stargate, different events come up and different party members are going to get sort of like traumas and issues and get wounded. And you can learn to manufacture different equipment for when you send them through. Things of that nature. Kind of like a management sim game, I guess. Mixed with a little bit of like colony survival. So we're going to dive on in today for about 35 minutes. See if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, it goes into early access on the day that this video goes live. I don't know what the price point is going to be as of right now, but the game goes live on the day that this video goes live. On top of that, if you look down below in the description, you will find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live. Normally on the day this video went live because I'm a big Evil Genius fan, I'd probably try to stream it, but I got workmen in my house right now knocking out walls and like rearranging the guts of my house. So unfortunately not going to be able to stream for a little bit. Let's go ahead and dive straight on in because time is a uh, wasting. We will go on ballast difficulty. Ooh, that's a cool little piece of art. Like the way that looks. Zippy load time too, considering I've got this on a rotary drive. It's not on a solid state. All right, so welcome to your first day as executive officer, the EXO for short at the EXOGATE initiative. I am Rudy Cobb with two Bs, founder and CEO. I've dedicated my fortune to the research and development of ExoGate technology, capable of sending people not just across the galaxy, but across the universe. Today we take our first tentative steps. The world is watching, but stay focused on your goals and we'll succeed together. All right, so here we are inside of our initial starting base. Looks like a couple little drone robots. Oh, look at that, dude. They're like little unicycle gunbots. Nice. Uh, we've got a number of things that the game wants me to do right this second. So the first thing the game wants me to do is it wants me to build a barracks over here. It needs to be a minimum of 20 blocks. I think we could probably do that. Do I need to, like, clear out space first? Is that, like, a thing? I gotta, dig ah, I gotta dig out an area first. Okay, so the barracks should probably be somewhere near the exo gate, in my opinion. That's 36 blocks right there. Got to make it like seven wide, though, so that the door centers. So that'll be the first thing we do right there. And let's see our little robots get to work. That's right, knock out that paneling. Oh, they work fast. Good for you, little dude. Man, you knocked out that wall way quicker than I could, dude. That would have been a week-long project for me. My man's laying in the laminate and everything. General contractors everywhere, terrified for their jobs. They want me to throw some beds and lockers in there, but additionally, it wants me to have a mess hall. I think I can have a mess hall. So let's go ahead and we will do a mess hall. We'll call that a seven by six as well and throw that in. Hopefully, is that costing me money? I was gonna say, I didn't know if it was costing me cash to dig out the terrain, but then again, we've got $200,000, which is like more money than I've ever seen in my life. So that's the good stuff right there. All right, we got, we got serious financial backing, okay? Already seeing a little bit of an initial issue in the way that the constructor bots decide to break down and build things. You're not seeing it now because I didn't capture it, unfortunately. But occasionally, the little robots were building surface faces on walls that are designated to be destroyed. Ideally, they wouldn't do that. They would just wait until the entire job's done and then do the walls and the floors. Uh, but I've seen them do it once or twice now while watching where they'll build one of these white walls on one of these little squares that's already been designated for destruction. So they'll spend a build cycle putting in the wall and then put in a build, they'll do a build cycle tearing it down right afterwards. So a little inefficiency there in the way that the AI functions. Uh, we'll go ahead and put our barracks in. 
Then we will go ahead and we will put in our mess hall. And dude, I'm such a messy eater. It's about to be wild up in here. You're about to be finding, you're about to find some grains of rice in places you didn't even know grains of rice could be, dude. I eat like a four year old and I take pride in it. Like, you ever seen the Tasmanian devil? That's how I eat right there. Ooh, I like the little Art Deco, like retro futuristic floorings they've got going on right there. Kind of like those Austin Powers carpets. I think maybe it tracks, so I'm watching the way it's converting this wall over here. I don't think maybe the game has done anything wrong. I'm not sure. I, I think like if a wall is attached to a finished block on several angles, it maybe converts the wall. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. But it gave the impression that they were wasting cycles uh, building stuff when they actually weren't. So we need three beds. That's... Easy enough, in my opinion. We'll probably stock up more beds in the future, but that'll do for right now. And then by clicking on the room, it also wants three lockers. So we kind of need to decide where those are going to go. I couldn't decide if those were flush or not. We're going to be using up a lot of space for our barracks. That's what it looks like to me. I was in a house one time where I swear to God... The entire house was done in linoleum like this right here. Like the living room, the bedrooms, like the entire thing was kind of like this 1950s sock hop diner flooring. I always wanted to ask the owner, like, did you just like it? Like, I've never seen, I'm not disparaging. I want to make that super clear. I've never seen that in my life, though. Uh, so we need two mess tables. There's some mess tables. And we probably need a meal dispenser because human beings like things to eat. So we'll just kind of centralize that bad boy right there. We have already spent $26,000. Man, we spent $26,000 in nine minutes. You'd think we were Warhammer 40k players. Good lord. All right, so now that everything's deployed, we've had a pop-up event. Now that all the warm welcome guff is out of the way, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Uh, Mr. Cobb's purse strings are notoriously loose, thus we at the committee are here to ensure that space exploration remains profitable. We shall monitor your progress and release funds when you achieve your goals. Your next goal is to find life in the universe. Yeah, just the little stuff, man. The easy tasks first. A difficult but profitable endeavor, wouldn't you agree? I don't think that first contact with an alien race is going to be profitable. I think it's going to be painful. That's the way that I feel about it. Now, we need to hire some people. So let's go ahead and we will throw out a campaign to go ahead and grab some scientists. Our expected applications appear to be four. It looks like I can take this up and make it longer. However, that will affect budgets. As with all things, it looks like wages affects whether or not somebody comes and gets the job more than anything else. I'll probably just... I'll probably just throw 20 grand at it and we'll see who applies. Give us a nice little cross section of people to select from. And I think from here, we need to build a laboratory. That's going to take 15 blocks. Okay. I think I can do that. I've clicked the wrong tool yet again. I think that's probably fine for a laboratory right there. I think that's probably okay. I think I can live with it. The next thing that we're going to need is a biosample containment that's almost uh, that's almost guaranteed to be inside the scientific hallway. I'll probably try to run a hallway up this way. Actually, if I can build off of there, it won't really necessarily matter, will it? I just want to note that I'm pretty sure they changed the tutorial around specifically because I was so stupid that I almost died the last time that I covered this game. I'm pretty sure I have this memory of playing this game and getting my scientists first and not having like a mess hall set up yet or like the mess hall was broken or something and like my guy's going hungry and, and now I think they make you construct it first as part of the tutorial before they let you get into the weeds of like recruiting people. I'm just I'm glad that I was the idiot that inspired the idiot proofing of their game. I, I like to help out where I can. You know what I mean? I'm a helpful guy. Now that we've knocked out this bad boy, oh, hey, period budget summary. This is most job popularity. Apparently, we have patent trending topics for bioweapons. Huh. Okay. It looks like they cut me off some cheddar, though. It looks like they sent a little bit of that goo to my way. So we need a biosample containment. There's one right there. And then they want me to have a biosample study desk. I think I can probably do that, too. Let's put in a big badass desk right there. You know, let's make it let's make it symmetrical. I think we've earned that. There we go. We'll we'll introduce a little bit of symmetricity to this situation. 
I don't know if that's a word, but frankly, I just made it up, and I feel like it's a perfectly valid word. Symmetricity. All right. Uh, we have one application for a scientist. We have Jordan Nguyen. Uh, so this guy's got three knowledge. Do we have anybody else? Oh yeah, dude. We want the we want the better stats for sure. So this guy kind of sucks. Sorry, Jordan. Who's got like the who's got the best? Okay, so like Marine Petite, she's pretty good. I'll hire her. It looks like Haruka Ito is probably the next best. And then from there, Meiju. And actually, Jordan might be in. No, I think Jordan's got the same stats as... No, he doesn't, actually. He's got slightly better stats. Okay, Jordan, I'm sorry. I passed on your application. You're in. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have passed on your application. As it turns out, you are welcome to join us. All right, and so we should see our... I don't, I don't know what we should call these guys, but in the UI, it calls them gators, which I'm actually okay with. But God help you if our logo does not have an alligator on it. I swear to God, God help us all if you don't have an alligator on the flag. You have to have an alligator on the flag. You just, you have to. Uh, well, I mean, no. That's, that's, no. There we go. Get them tables in in case these guys get hungry. And we need to go to the Stargate. Here is the Stargate menu. I don't remember. I think the last time I played the game, it was just scripted. I don't remember picking a planet the last time I played the game. But that one looks pretty green. Some destinations have flora and fauna, which scientists can study in the field. Is there any way to tell? So recommended level one, recommended level two. Okay, let's go for this little planet over here. Everybody's level one, so... Okay, so we're not going to be able to connect to any of these locations until we build a power plant. I've actually deployed too many things. You may notice I also swapped out our desk and our room's not symmetrical anymore. That's because I'm super dumb and I didn't have the right thing queued up. Oh yeah, I was going to make like a hallway or something that connects over here, right? Yeah, I think that's doable. Let's go ahead and we'll put in a little hallway like that right there. And once the hallway's in call this like a, a six by seven for the power plant. I don't know exactly how expensive it's going to be to have the power plant in there, but in terms of space and in terms of cash, we're going to need a power plant because it takes a certain amount of requisite energy to boot up the Stargate. As it turns out, interplanar travel is expensive. It's got costs. Power plant time. Let's go do it. Wow. 20 G's for a power plant. Not bad, actually. All things considered, going by my power bill. Ah, in this universe, they've invented fusion. They've already got that, so that explains it. Okay, yeah, so we're going to need to slap in some power plants. It doesn't have an arrow saying what side this is interacted with from, so I'm going to guess that it does not get interacted with at all. It's just kind of here. It looks like they slapped it into place pretty quickly. Doesn't look like the device itself is animated. Well, it's got a little bit. It's got like some texture going on right there. A lighting texture. So it's all right. Doesn't look too bad. But there's 210 energy for the future. Now we can beam ourselves ass first into the future. So let's do this thing. Uh, we'll go to this frosty boy planet right here. And we will create a mission. We will create a team. Uh, we will call it the P team. Their color will be... P green. There you go. P team has been selected. So P team over here. How do I set up the team? Ah, it looks like P team is arranged down here. Uh, well, I want to send the best and the brightest. That's, that's pretty much where I'm at. So I'm going to send the people that have the best stats. This is a little bit of a weird... Oh, it kind of like consumes them. I was going to say, it's kind of like a weird UI where you've got like your list of guys and then you've got the slots down here. It sort of implied that it was going to be drag and drop where you would click and drag somebody down there and they would disappear from this list and appear in the selected list, but not the case. As you pick them, this like folds upwards and like grabs them, I guess. Odd. A little bit strange visually, but it's fine. Now let's go ahead and start P-Team's mission. This is where we get to walk in slow motion while holding our helmets towards the camera. And then as we go past, like, there's one solitary horn that's like, <laughs> 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 
and then like the other horns come in with like a bum bum, bum bum. Like, dude, I've I've watched way too many films. That's exactly how they would film this right here. Something bad's gonna happen though. There's no way we get away with this. You guys didn't even put on spacesuits. Why ain't you guys put on spacesuits? Are you sure that that place is gonna be okay when you get there? So P-Team is going to be on mission for six days. Unfortunately, Jordan over here has been left behind. Uh, he's not feeling so good about it. Pro probably a little bit sad. This is a clickable button, and I want to click it, but I'm worried it's going to, like, abort the mission or something. YOLO! Oh, it's just a fold down. I got scared for a second when they all disappeared. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like that. I just fire my entire scientific staff. I'm just saying. We have a pop-up. XO. It's petite. We step through the gate for the first time back there. After a moment of dizziness, we're standing on the surface of planet PA-771. All right. Well, we did it. We certainly did, and I can't believe it. There's actually life here. This place is teeming with plant life, and there's other planets in the sky. Friendly plant life, I hope. Affirmative. There's not a triffid in sight. I better think of something memorable to say. I had a line prepared, but this is too much. I've forgotten it. Uh, stay calm, Marine. She's actually literally a space marine right now. Uh, you're only being watched on every screen, flat 3D VR HD from Mumbai to the moon. Uh, no pressure? I think I'm hyperventilating. Oh my god. We've got a neurotic scientist that we sent to a different planet. Okay, um, you're doing great. Okay, I think I'm good, but I don't know what to say. Can I get a steer, XO? Uh, be yourself. I'll try. Give me a second to regain my composure. Deep breath. PA-771 is a long way from France where I grew up. I know all my friends and family are watching back home, and to them I wanted to say thank you, and I will see you soon. Nicely done. <laughs> it's good enough. It's not bad. That was more nerve-wracking than stepping through the gate. Okay, samples, you want to show it to the live stream? Good idea. We're spoiled for choices. There's grass here at our feet, and there are mosses in the cave to the west. And to the south, there's a leafy tree hanging over the edge of a cliff. Let's go for the tree. Oh, it taps into their different... Okay, go to the cave, since she's got high knowledge, but she doesn't have high body. I've got a piece of moss in a sample jar. It's slimy and kind of glowing in the dim light. The cave is spectacular and deep. It disappeared for outside the range of our bioluminescent, I think is the word you're looking for, scientist. Uh, great work. The ratings just went through the... R oh, yeah, we care about ratings. Huh? Gotcha. So now that we have the sample, we can store it in the lab back at base and study it to learn more. Cool. Before we sign off, why don't you say a few words about the wider goals of the initiative and tell the world what you want to accomplish? I mean, science first. It'll play well on Twitter, I guess. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're a corporation. It's pretty clear that we're here to profit and exploit as much as humanly possible. So we might as well get the lying done early. We're doing it for science. Uh, to learn from the world around us with discoveries and knowledge that can help you. Man there you go. That's, that's the company line. Good for you. Somebody's getting a raise. Uh, that concludes the live stream. Any final words? Thank you, XO. Please watch out for more missions from the initiative. Okay, sounds good. That's a wrap. And so, these guys are all going to get some XP. Doesn't look like that level. It looks like they're going to need about four missions before they're actually, like, done in a way and ready to rock. But they came back hungry, so that's good. Got a little bit of that hunger up in there. There's our sample being placed inside the... Oh, that's cool. It's got, like, a little interactivity where they slot it on in. Yeah, we've captured a moss or something. Oh, this guy's going to study it. Nice, man. Get on in there. Yeah, tippity-tap-tap, tap, tippity-tap-tap. Tap. Dude, the, the clickety-clack of those keys right there is so therapeutic. I don't know why, but this is like hardcore ASMR for me right now. Everybody look away. Uh, holy cow, you did it. I knew we'd find life, but not this quickly. I watched the stream, and it was incredible. Those legendary first words on an exoplanet. Yeah, hi, Mom. That tends to be a winner. Uh, still, you need to keep the money flowing if you want to keep the committee sweet. Did I mention we can sell patents and develop theories by studying samples from missions, then use them to publish patents? Okay, this doesn't seem to be in the scientific spirit to me, but uh, it looks like we are capable of researching new things. Yeah, so it looks like every room has its own research tree. 
that we can play around with. Some of them are already completed, obviously, but some of them have a lot more stuff to fiddle around with. So once we have a research bench, we can mess around with that. It looks like we can write a patent for a bioweapon. Why would that be the first thing? We, dude, we just said that we were here for scientific exploration. And the first thing we're going to do with the first bit of bioluminescent moss we find is make a weapon out of it. Humanity, man. 5,000 years of just trying to figure out how to put metal in the other guy. Man. I don't like this at all. All right. Uh, so select theories that are to be included in the patent. I don't know. I can't even tell if anything's like clickable here. So it looks like we've just got like an uncommon theory that we're throwing on in there. It looks like this is all maybe, it looks like this is all maybe just conceptualized down, I guess. Go ahead and start writing a patent for a bioweapon that will maybe earn $2,000, which is kind of a drop in the bucket considering what our budget is. Do these guys need like rest or anything before we send them back on out and away for like another mission or are they good? It looks like we can claim the planets too, so we're actually like conquerors, and I love the way that they worded this down here inside the tutorial. So it says some worlds must be claimed before you can utilize them, such as material destinations before you can mine them. Worlds that are home to intelligent beings cannot be claimed until you've completed cultural studies or missions of self-defense. I don't know in any way in teleporting ourselves onto someone else's planet I don't know if that counts as a self-defense mission, but that is a very human way to put it. It sells well to the shareholders. Let's go to this orange planet down here. Let's make a mission and we'll send P-Team on it. P-Team, get on out there. I believe in all of you. So I also need a patent writing console, I guess. Otherwise, I can't write patents. So I may actually need this room to be a little bit larger, but we'll put the patent console right there for right now. So they're on their away mission. It's going to be like six days until we need to check in with them. Once that's up, we should him see him spring into action. Ah, I've got to assign him to do it. Gotcha. Uh, it looks like the committee has given us 50 Gs, which is good. And with our salaries of 22000 for the month or the quarter or whenever it was... It looks like that's cut us down to like 28 in profit. That's still pretty good. And it looks like the trending sources... Okay, so I like the food source a lot better. Can I cancel the patent over here? Well, unfortunately, it looks like I can only carry out the bioweapon patent for right now, which is kind of a bummer. I don't love that the first thing we're crafting out of moss, like some kind of sociopathic Minecraft Steve, is a gun. I, I don't know. I, I feel it's worse than a gun, dude. It might be nerve gas. It says bioweapon. We might be making anthrax right now, dude. Who knows? All right, so bio samples have come back on, and there was no interactivity on this mission. So I guess they just kind of grabbed the sample and bailed. It looks like they actually maybe got two bio samples. Yeah, they did. Good. Hopefully we can do something other than make sarin gas. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do something other than create VX gas. I'm like, but what if we got to fight some aliens? I'm like, well, maybe don't like, maybe, maybe, maybe. May Maybe don't get yourself in a situation where you need to fight the aliens. Like, maybe we could just sort of, like, be friends with the aliens. Did we think about that? It seems possible that I may have deployed all these beds upside down. It's okay, because this game lets you move things whenever you want, and so we'll fix that once everybody wakes up. Wow, you guys... Oh, I guess time goes really fast. I was gonna say, you guys slept for, like, an eighth of a second. So I told him to write the patent. Oh, it wants me to use multiple theories to write the patent. That's what went wrong. Okay, so we've got to combine our theories here. You rotate, you rotate, and you rotate. There we go. All the beds are now being used in unison, and it looks like everybody's doing their thing. We don't want to send them on away missions too much because that leaves us with one guy left behind, and then nobody gets their social interaction, and it seems to depress them. I'm hoping at some point they will interact or talk with one another. Okay, so they're doing it right. I think Jordan is just kind of the odd man out. Like, I think just nobody likes Jordan. Everybody's interacting with everybody but Jordan right now. There we go. Inter interact with the Jordanator, dude. So what do we have here for patents? Oh, so they come in differing qualities. Gotcha. 
Okay, well, throw it together, man. What's your what's who's got the best writing stat among us? Like who is who is the dopest writer? So he's got a four in writing. She's got a four in writing. Oh, pretty much everybody here is actually decent. Yeah, everybody here is decent, so it doesn't really matter who does it, does it? Like it can it could really be whoever uh, that writes the patent, but I think we have one person that has five instead of four, so we'll give that a go. I do like the way that the the game like clearly telegraphs how much you're gonna get paid and what stat goes into what investigations. I like that a lot actually. And it looks like they get XP for pretty much like every single interaction they do inside the base. I keep seeing it say like XP up for just talking to somebody else inside the base. So even little things like social interaction lead to them getting XP, which is really nice. I think we're gonna need another dormitory too. Like that other dormitory might be a little undersized, I guess. We're gonna want this to be a tad more chonky. I guess I'll do like a, a big one over here. Yeah, I think that that works for now. It's not perfect, but it's something, and it'll give us room to grow, and we won't really have to build any other dormitories for a while. I do have a lot of robots doing their thing, so how much did we earn from that patent right there? Is that done? It's not done. It says that what we pull in is monthly, so that 5,000 to 6,000 is going to be a monthly tick, which I think is probably a lot better. I would still very much like to not be designing bioweapons. I would rather do something productive for humanity that, like, solves a food crisis or, like, purifies water or something. But, you know, uh, it looks like our patent is done, actually. So that's good to go. Patent is finished. We should, we should see that reflected, I guess, in the monthly butcher's bill for how much it's going to cost us to function. For now, I think I need to send people out on another mission because we got to get five samples before they're going to give us, like, our beta round of funding or whatever. It may also be worth it for us to buy another robot or two. So I'll probably pick up, yeah, two more robots. That sounds good. Five is a nice even number. I've always been weirdly neurotic about having things divisible by five. I need things to be divisible by five. I don't, I don't know what it is. I've talked about this in the past. Like, I love the fact that the money here does not just have, like, an extra five or a six in it like at the end, so that it's all divisible by five. I think that's probably going to change really soon uh, due to the fact that our patent is adding an odd number to the whole thing, but I usually prefer that things are divisible by five. That's how I roll. Let's send our gators out for another mission here. So we'll create a mission over here for P-Team just to grab that other planet. Yeah, go ahead and start the mission, I guess. Now that that's done, we'll probably add in another dormitory down here, too. Just to get it bopping a little bit. All right, so let's see what's going on here. We've got our budget summary for the month. It looks like we made 32 grand, so that's not bad. 32 grand in a month, huh? Chat, how would you like to make $32,000 a month? It's a pretty good paycheck. That'll change your life. Uh, it looks like scientists, unfortunately, are not very popular right now. So it looks like there's kind of like these monthly mutators to how the game functions that make you kind of stay on your toes. Hey, they're back from their mission. I'm a little bit disappointed that there aren't really any more interact. So what I liked about the first mission is that they're radioing back like what they want to do. And I was hoping the missions would have more of those interactions. So, like, the missions would have you making decisions based on the stats that the characters have. And I'm guessing there will be in the future, but to me, while we're already on the subject, to me, that feels like what this game is going to have to hang its hat on. That's what, eight beds? There we go. So we've got room for eight more scientists now. We can have up to 12 guys at this point. I was willing to kind of expand the dorms out a little bit and make it happen. But if you take a look at a game like Wilder Myth, uh, that's the perfect example of a game that I feel like knew what its strength was and knew what its target audience was. If you've never played Wilder Myth, Wilder Myth is a procedurally generated RPG where everything is randomized, but it's got like hundreds and hundreds of these little events that can happen that sort of force interactivity between your characters and between your settlements and stuff like that. And there's so many of them that every single playthrough feels incredibly different. Like it's a game that's just got such 
uh, dense replayability because even after a bunch of playthroughs, you won't have seen every event. This game needs that. Uh, so a huge amount of writing, in my opinion, should go into all of the planetary interactions, like loads and loads and loads of events need to be written out just nonstop uh, so that every planet has like a problem that comes up or a thing that you need to think your way through or a thing that you need to resolve. Like that to me is what makes this like a really cool experience. So we need 20 to lock on over there. Okay, I'm not quite ready. Some destinations have unusual events that your team will encounter, but they give much more XP than others. Okay, so they're marked then. So some planets are specifically just for sample grabbing, but these ones over here are going to be like those Wilder Myth planets, I guess. And that one requires a level 3, so I think we're probably going to have to stay loosey-goosey for a little bit on what we can accomplish. i got to wait for everybody to eat, and then potentially we can send them back out for another resource collection. Oh, we've got a textile source with this little guy with this theory. So I guess theories are, it looks like theories potentially. So what it looks like to me is that your theories are specifically pertaining to certain subjects. And whether or not you have that subject or not depends on whether or not you have found the material on a different planet that provides that theory, I guess. That's kind of what it looks like to me anyways. Let's send P-Team out again. P-Team! Sure, let's connect to a level 2 planet. P-Team. You're on this. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 I think actually this game is fertile territory to fold in a lot of the ideas from Wilder Myth, now that I'm thinking about it. Like, so if they get all those events implemented, they could also change around the way the characters look based on the events that they've lived through. So let's say that a player or a character goes to a planet and there's some kind of like crazy alien artifact there that has intrinsically changed them on like a deep level. When they come back, their skin might be blue and it might have like pink LED cracks in their skin and their eyes are glowing yellow. And that's just for like the remainder of the game. And then if you like click on their little character card, you know, like this guy has, it actually adds in a little perk down here and tells you what that does. So maybe they become super good at scientific analysis, but they get half the benefit from social interaction now. Like little things like that add so much re replayability to the game if you have enough events to kind of germinate all of these different planetary interactions with. And then if those directly affect the characters and their appearance as well, that starts to create an emergent story for the player that I think is part of the enduring appeal of what makes Wilder Myth so popular. And I think actually a lot of those ideas can be deployed into this game very effectively uh, so that it becomes more than kind of just like Theme Hospital, but a little bit different or like Evil Genius, but a little bit different. Stuff like that, I think, is really what's going to make it stand out. Our team should be back very shortly. We've only got like four or five hours left. There we go. And so they have all actually gotten a lot of XP on that mission and brought back three samples. Good for them. Uh, we're going to need more sample containers. I don't have enough sample containers right now. So I don't know if they'll just leave them on the floor or what they're going to do. Oh, she put it directly in the machine rather than storing it and just got straight to work on it. Good. I was worried it was going to get discarded, but the game rightfully saw that this thing can also be an improvised storage if you just start the work right now. I love it. Good job. That's fantastic. Uh, so we need to wait for all these to be scanned out. And once they've been scanned out, we'll figure out what we want to do with them. I do have a little bit more money to run a second team that we can rotate. Let's call it a scientific, uh, we'll say maximum wage will be, let's call it 6,000 this time around. We will run it for, I want to, I want to have a pretty good, I, I want to have a pretty good selection of scientists. We're not hurting for money right now and we should have new patents coming in from these devices that we've picked up. So she's studying. That's good. Studying's done. It looks like we picked up a common patent idea. I can't help but feel like we're being a little bit inefficient over here. Like we could be pulling out faster patents, but I guess we don't really have a whole lot going on. So it looks like over here we've actually got a pretty good patent ready to go for a textile source. Yeah, 
It'll bring in money. Let's do it. Ten grand a month is like two more hires, and then it looks like we've actually got our recruiting ready to go as well. So we've got Yao Chen. We've got Vinicius Pereira. We've got William Walker. He actually might be a pick. Megan Davies, a little bit of an all-arounder right there. Chow Song. Uh, U.M., actually really good at knowledge. Terrible at everything else, but very knowledgeable. I would say she's hired. Uh, I like spiky kind of glass cannon characters like that. We've got Sophie Wagner. Okay. I think Yao Chen is a good pick. I think William Walker is a good pick. And I think Sophie Wagner is probably a good pick as well. We'll bring them all in, and then we're going to take a look at our overhead at the end of this month and see how bad it hurts us. But that should give us enough people for a secondary team, and that should leave us with two scientists back inside the base when the away teams are all out to socialize with one another and also complete work that needs to take place inside the base proper. And so to unlock, none of our patents expired. That's good. It looks like this first month we weren't, our patent wasn't up long enough in order to generate, maybe it didn't get done. It looks like we're basically breaking even right now, so we're gonna need to like, we're gonna, we're gonna need to do some work on the ye oldie patents out here. However, the person that should be assigned to it was you. Which one of these guys, one of these guys had way, way, way more knowledge than everybody else. It was you. Okay, so you were not gonna assign to a team. Uh, you, we're going to have dedicated to patent writing, basically, because she's got the highest knowledge of everybody. And in fact, I think when she levels up, she's going to cap out on knowledge uh, because I noticed that when Jordan over here leveled up, he definitely increased his knowledge. So I think she's actually in a good position to be like the knowledge bomb uh, of all these guys. So I need to open up a new team as well. So we need a secondary team ready to rock. The second team will have an I right there, and they'll be gold-colored, and we'll call them the Infamous Crew. All right, so Infamous Crew, we need an assignment there, so we'll go back over and manage on this side. Uh, you was the one person that was going to stay writing patents, so we'll put Yao Chen probably on this one. We will put William Walker on that one right there. And then we will put, I think, Sophie Wagner is the one that's left over. Yeah, Sophie Wagner. There we go. We filled out our second team. And so finances are proceeding adequately, but that could disappear quickly with a well-aimed lawsuit. Far be it from us how to tell you how to run the initiative, but our risk assessment shows that we're lacking in the health and safety department. Recruit a soldier or two to help the investors feel more secure and put it on your radar. Okay, so... Send, I guess sending so th this feels like with every sci-fi uh, sort of avatar styled film though I feel like the second we start folding military guys into this that's gonna introduce a conflict like I know that the first thing we did was bio we, we created a patent for a bioweapon with the first moss that we found so I get the feeling that we're probably already well on our way towards sort of like a Northrop Grumman ending to this entire experience. Like, we, we've definitely got, like, a... Like, I don't see a whole lot of outcomes where this doesn't turn into, like, a Wayland yutani type situation. But let's just roll with the punches and do the best that we can. So have I unlocked anything yet? I don't have a laboratory. Or I guess this is a laboratory right here. But we don't have a research bench. So I'm going to slap in a research bench just to capitalize on the space. We'll take a look at what research we might potentially be able to pull off from the science points that we currently have available. So let's look at the tech tree here. And I think a med bay is a really good idea if anything goes wrong on this adventure. And that's pretty much all that we've got right there. But that will allow us to recruit medics and doctors that we can send on our trips as well. That's that. What's the guy? What's the name of the guy from the Patriot? that played the bad guy Dragoon in that. To this day, I think the only movie that he ever played a good guy in was Event Horizon. Like, he was one of the only crew members that was actually, like, acting in good faith by the end of that film, I guess. Well, I take that back. It's been a while since I've seen it. Baby Bear got exploded pretty early. He got that explosive decompression treatment. 
I guess as everybody slowly went nuts on that, he was the only one that was able to like resist the pull of the uh, of the event horizon, though. Like I think he was the only one that didn't actually like go full on nut job by the end. Like he had like the psychological evaluation training to resist it, which is why the event horizon had to get rid of him. <laughs> I say that we do a double deployment here just to be real go getters. Now, Infamous is only... Well, maybe I should cancel that mission. Cancel that mission. Infamous should be going to, like, the level one place over here. Oh, no. The research bench bottomed out all of our power. I got to put some more fusion generators in here, man. I like to fuse it. Fuse it. You know what? Just, just bang this thing out, bro. Just make the whole thing... Put some... There you go. Perfect. The med bay has been researched. So maybe we'll just go kind of like 9 by 6 right here on a med bay. See what that looks like. I would have liked it if there was like little rocks and obstructions and things in here that you needed to get rid of as well via various researches or by having a certain amount of certain jobs. Like when you get to it and you clear to it, you can click on it and it asks you how you want to clear the big boulder or like the uh, vein of ore or whatever it is that's running through here. And like you can use the stats of your various characters. Uh, to resolve that to differing effects and like differing benefits like differing levels of exploitation i suppose would have been kind of cool there we go our power is good to go now if nope not p team p team doesn't go there infamous goes there because they're all level one and then p team needs to go to like a level two planetoid so we'll create a mission over here and we will send p team there we go both teams are out and away and then hopefully by the time they return, we'll have the med bay done. That should afford us... We may not actually need this many scientists. I wasn't thinking about the fact that we're going to have different jobs. So we may need to fire a couple people. One thing that's interesting here, a nice little quality of life thing that I feel like I saw, is it looks like they wait until their stats are at a certain level before they go on the mission. They straight up told me they wouldn't go on a mission because they were too tired. And then they went and slept and now they're all going on the mission. Huh. Weird. Oh, Infamous has a... They have an event. We found a giant mushroom that's towering to the atmosphere. Okay, do we have anything similar on record? There are continent-spanning fungal colonies on Earth, but none as immense as this. It's a huge mushroom. Cap it all. Estimated height. Couple clicks. Swaying gently and singing. Take a sample, please. Roger that. XO, we're closer to the giant mushroom now. Singing's getting louder. Everything's becoming kind of majestic. Keep me informed. Uh-oh. Dude, is it an evil mushroom? It's an evil mushroom. I bet you. I bet you it's an evil mushroom, dude. It's a mushroom that's going to try to take over their brains like that one mushroom that takes over, like, uh, bug brains or whatever down in Australia or New Zealand or whatever it is. Update on His Majesty. His Majesty? Yes, His Majesty the Mushroom King, Your Highness. His Mightiness. Um, He's just so majestic, so incredibly majestic. Did you get that sample I asked you for? We did indeed, thanks to his majesty. It smells so good to be this close to him. Okay, move away from his majesty. Uh, yes, we acknowledge. Good, over and out. See, so like it would be hilarious if he came back and he was wearing like a little crown that was made out of mushrooms. <laughs> Until further notice. Like little interactions like that matter to me. I don't know. Or he had, like, mushrooms sticking out of his head from now on. Like, I love little things like that. And I think other players do as well. Especially if those events are randomized, so you don't always get the mushrooms on every run. Exo, it's me. When we took that sample from His Majesty, it broke the hold. Oh, thank Christ. That thing infected us, probably with spores, and wanted us to become one with it. <laughs> Yo! My man almost made love to a fungus. It's okay. It happens to the best of us around closing time. Uh, we'll complete the rest of the mission and bring home the sample we got. It's pretty majestic. Uh, it's pretty. I'm just going to leave it at that, all right? Yeah, get back. Now what? I want to see what we got for the med bay. So it looks like we have med beds where you can be treated by a medic or await diagnosis for surgery. We've got a diagnosis pod. Did you guys make it back okay? They made it back okay, and they brought back some science with them, so I'll take it. P-team, everything appears to be going without issue. But yeah, I like the core gameplay loop of this. I think this is solid for a first early access build. The core gameplay loop is clear. Even straight from the beginning of the game, they get you into the action. It's very obvious that this is drawing from, like, 
you know, two-point hospital, and it's drawing from Evil Genius, and it's drawing from kind of Dungeon Keeper, but pushing in a different direction, so the references are obvious to the player, and what you're supposed to be doing is easy and simple to figure out. I do think that the sorting into teams could be a little bit better. Like, the way that I probably would have done it is I wouldn't have had these unified. I probably would have had recruitment, like, on a different tab up top, and then I would have slid this over to the left, or I would have, like, had it take up, like, half the screen, and then, like, teams would be up here. Like, I, I would have kind of done it differently, I guess, but it works perfectly fine once you know what you're looking at. It's no big deal right there. But, yeah, my, my expectations going forward is lots and lots and lots of narrative events. Like, this is a game that's going to live or die based on the amount of narrative events they can squeeze in. Oh, she got injured. Okay. Uh, this is a game that's going to live or die based on the amount of events they can potentially squeeze into all of these different planetary interactions. There we go. I couldn't see the bed. Uh, so go ahead and give me... Actually, these should probably face the door, I guess. Yeah, probably face the door, but we're getting a little bit long in the tooth here. I definitely want to put some more time into this, and I definitely want to check it out a little bit harder. We need to recruit, like, some medics, too. I'm not going to go too wild and crazy. I'm guessing the money that you spend is the number one factor in how good the medics are that you're going to be picking up. That's my estimate, anyways. But yeah, we need to pick up some medics, otherwise these people are going to be in a little bit of rough shape. We need diagnostic pods. So we'll get like two of those bad boys over there. They cost 10 Gs a piece, man. I believe it though. I believe it. So we've got physical and mental dispensers for our treatments. So we'll go like a physical and a mental dispenser right there. Uh, but my buddy used to, he's one of a very, I know a guy who's a very, He's an ultrasound technician for a very specific type of ultrasound, and he flies all over the world and makes like a gazillion dollars a year doing it because the ultrasounds cost so much that it's all you can basically charge whatever you want up to a certain threshold to fix it because the ultrasound machines cost like, you know, gazillions of dollars. And so, anyways, that's what he does, and I believe it. Medical technology like ultrasound machines and like CAT scan beds and stuff like that cost a ridiculous fortune. Just like an absolute absurdity. Oh, she's got frostbite. Well, that's good. We sent her to a... We sent her to a frost planet, so I guess that makes sense. She would get frostbite from there. I like that the injuries are on theme for wherever it was that they went. You've got abdominal pain. It's just gas. You just need to f lay on your right-hand side. You just need to fart it out. You'll be fine. I do have medics ready to go though, so let me let me deploy some medics out here. It looks like mind strength is probably the main. St oh, Nicholas, my man, that's a good that's a good doctor right there. He costs a lot though. He's quite expensive. All right, good doctor. I'll take you, and I'll take Rina Takahashi. I don't think we need many more doctors than that. So we'll pick up two doctors, and then we gotta we gotta get back to writing patents out here. There's just no way around it. We gotta write some patents. We gotta make some money. So we've got one for radiation therapy right here. So we'll go ahead and queue that up. And once again, I can tell I'm having a good time because I'm I've, this video is stupid long. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day, so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we we're checking out Exogate Initiative. I don't have any problems with this early access. I don't see any major issues. Uh, the options appear to be all in a decent place. They've got the basic stuff here for, like, V-Sync and whatnot, panning speed for the keyboard, audio sliders, fully rekey bindable keys, Twitch integration. So it looks like on the options front, they've done a good job. They've got a feedback button there where they can collect from the community. Uh, my thoughts are that it just needs all the narrative content in the world for these little away missions. Every single time you send a team out, there should kind of be basically like a 50-50 shot of a branching narrative just like the mushroom thing that happened and you need to have a writer on staff for this game that's just mashing out these little you know short five paragraph choose your own adventures just over and over and over again until you've got like hundreds of them basically because replayability is going to be the key here to making this whole thing work uh, i will see you all later thank you for stopping on in and that's about all i've got bye folks